What is going on everybody? Today is February 17th. It's a Friday and we're going to be answering another Q&A. This is going to be the last video here for the week and we're going to be discussing systolic murmurs. Now this question comes from Sierra and she asks or says, I think it would be very helpful to have a review of heart murmurs with audio clips. So we're going to be answering Sierra's uh, request today. We're going to be talking systolic murmurs. And as always, if you have any questions, if you want to have anything answered, need any advice, anything whatsoever, I'm more than happy to chat with you. You can send me an email over at andrew at physicianassistantboards.com or you can go ahead and DM me on PA Boards Instagram or you can DM me on my personal Instagram. The personal Instagram is A-N-D underscore R-E-I-D and the PA Boards Instagram is P-A-B-O-A-R-D-S. So we're going to get into Sierra's question. We're going to be discussing systolic murmurs. Now, we're going to be starting off with aortic stenosis. And the etiology here is going to be calcification of the aorta. This is really going to be the main etiology, usually going to be seen in the elderly. Other etiologies are congenital bicuspid and unicuspid valves and rheumatic disease. Now, the most common symptom here is going to include dyspnea, angina, and dizziness. We can also have patients presenting with syncope, this is going to be a more severe uh, case of aortic stenosis. Now, the murmur here, right? The murmur is going to be a systolic crescendo, decrescendo murmur. We're going to be hearing this best at the second right intercostal space, and it's going to radiate to the neck. So, heard best at the second right intercostal space. And uh, so, I'm going to put a uh, visual here. If you're listening on the podcast, I'm sorry, you're not going to hear, you're not going to see the visual. But I'm going to be putting a visual here on the YouTube video. So we're going to hear it best at the second right intercostal space. It's going to radiate to the neck. Now, patients who present with any type of symptoms require surgical correction because there's a high risk of sudden death. Remember, systolic, crescendo, decrescendo, murmur, and we're going to be uh, listening to that audio clip right now. All right, moving on to pulmonic stenosis. Now, pulmonic stenosis is really going to present with dyspnea, fatigue, and syncope. This is going to be heard best at the left upper sternal border, and you can hear an ejection click. So pulmonic stenosis is going to be heard best at the left upper sternal border. We're going to hear an ejection click. Treatment here is going to be balloon valvotomy, and we can even do surgery once symptoms get severe or once the pulmonic stenosis becomes severe. Now let's listen to pulmonic stenosis. All right, mitral regurgitation. Now the main etiology here is simply going to be secondary to mitral valve prolapse and coronary artery disease. So mitral regurg, we're looking at my, mitral valve prolapse and coronary disease. Patients here are usually going to be asymptomatic, but they can have very non-specific symptoms like dyspnea and fatigue. The murmur here is going to be a holosystolic murmur. There's only a few murmurs that give a holosystolic murmur. Mitral regurg is one of these. It's a holosystolic murmur. It's going to be heard best over the apex, and it's going to radiate to the axilla. Now, asymptomatic patients really do not need any treatment. If symptoms develop, we can give vasodilators, but if severe or worsening, or we don't have any type of improvements with the medication, the next step here is going to be surgery. So mitral regurgitation is a holosystolic murmur. Let's listen to mitral regurgitation right now. Okay, now moving into mitral valve prolapse. Now, mitral valve prolapse is uh, usually typically going to present asymptomatically. Now, when there are symptoms, we can look for the classic presentation of the female patient who has anxiety, right? Female patient with chest pain, palpitations, anxiety. This is classic, but usually patients will be asymptomatic. Now, mitral valve prolapse, the murmur here has a mid-systolic click a possible late systolic murmur depending on the severity of the regurg. We're simply going to treat these patients with beta blockers. 
So the murmur here is a, has a mid systolic click and it can have a possible late systolic murmur depending on the severity of the regurge. Remember regurge, the most uh, common etiology here is going to be mitral valve prolapse and coronary artery disease. Treat these patients with beta blockers. The last one here on the list is going to be tricuspid regurgitation. Now, this is most commonly from dilation of the right atrium and the ventricle. Symptoms are going to be very nonspecific, but if present, we can look for right-sided heart failure symptoms if present, right? So symptoms nonspecific, look for right-sided heart failure symptoms. The murmur here is going to be holosystolic in nature. It's heard best at the left mid sternal border. So it's a holosystolic murmur heard best at the left mid sternal border. And when regurg is severe, the murmur will fade. Diuretics are used for symptom control. And for those with heart failure, therapy is really going to be aimed at heart failure. So systolic heart failure, we're going to be treating, remember, ACE. Beta blockers are the mainstay of therapy here, ACE and beta blockers. And if you have severe symptoms, then you do surgery as the next step. So let's listen to tricuspid regurgitation. So these were the systolic murmurs. We listened to aortic stenosis, pulmonic stenosis, mitral regurgitation, mitral valve prolapse, tricuspid regurgitation. Let's listen to these one more time. We're going to start off with aortic stenosis. Now we're going to move on to pulmonic stenosis. Moving on to mitral regurgitation. Now let's listen to mitral valve prolapse. And we're going to finish this off with tricuspid regurgitation. So that concludes today's episode. This was a quick overview of the systolic murmurs. Again, we discussed the aortic stenosis, pulmonic stenosis, mitral regurgitation, mitral valve prolapse, and tricuspid regurgitation. If you have any questions whatsoever, send an email over to andrew at physicianassistantboards.com or you can send questions to my personal Instagram, which is and underscore reid, or the PA Boards Instagram, which is simply P-A-B-O-A-R-D-S. I hope you have a great Friday. Hope you have a great weekend and I'll chat with you guys next week. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye.